welcome to another edition of the eSpot with Camille. The eSpot is your location for the latest in entertainment, beauty, and design from the people who make it. Thanks for joining. Hey, this is Tommy Davis. You can catch me on the eSpot. That's right! Hey everybody, this is Marcus Anderson, and look for me on the East Spot. Three dollars for Apple. You want Apple or not? <laughs> so um, it's so <laughs> nice to have you here at Central. I'm just curious, like, what is your main goal that you're hoping the students will get from coming to Leap, especially here at HBCU? This is so exciting. We're so happy to have someone of your caliber here to teach us. I about how to get in the professional business and be professionals. Yeah, yeah, inspiration. Mm -hmm. Inspiration, we all draw from it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I found that that was one of the most inspiring things for me was to have individuals on every level. When I was growing up, mm -hmm. you know, all, all the way until I, um, I went to college. I went to college for a semester, <laughs> um, but, I, but, I, but I experienced some things on a, on a, on a really uh, unique level. Because my counselor at the time, she told me, look, you have some other things on your mind. I've been talking to you for the last five months. And this may not be the place for you right now. She said, you got a job. You got a little apartment. You got two cars. You know, you, you, you're pretty balanced in your, in your, in your, in your, in your personal life. Yeah. She said, I think you have something that's outside of the box. Yeah, yeah. So... That led to now. I saw her years later. I was in a, I'm, I'm walking through the lobby of the hotel in, in uh, Miami. Mm -hmm. And she walked up to me and she said, do you remember me? I said, of course I remember you. She said, I was so worried about you because I had never told a student not to go to school. Mm -hmm. And she said, when I saw you on TV, I started crying. You know, and then her husband was, was standing there and he said, yeah, she always used to talk about you. Yeah, so it's you know? so important to have somebody to pour into you and to see that light yes. in you. So how yes. do you maintain that? Like, how do you stay inspired? How do you keep, because mm -hmm. you've been in this industry for a very long time. I have, I have. And you're still, look, 20 years old. I'll take you, I'll take you. You <laughs> so see you all that? maintained it you very well. You see all that? Oh, Grecian okay, formula okay, can take okay, care okay, of that. Okay, I got to give me some Grecian. <laughs> They Shoot. still even make that? I don't yeah, know. I'm yeah, giving yeah. them at my age, but I'm curious for you, how do you stay inspired and what are you hoping the students will really gain as far as prof having that level of professionalism okay, okay. to make it into the entertainment um, industry? I guess at 59, mm. I've learned to take it a day at a time. You know, mm. I know that there's, you know, my, my inspiration is drawn from black folk and who I am yeah. um, because you know what we've been through from the very beginning. And but that, but that wasn't all. <laughs> but that wasn't all. Mm -hmm. And here we are. So, you know, just as well as, just as well as they carry around Queen Elizabeth on a pedestal, then I do that for my great, 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 great grandfather and mother who prayed me to hear, prayed me to hear. They had all the all the confidence in me in the world. As they should. Went a whole lifetime. Yeah. Went a whole lifetime working, dying, struggling a whole lifetime. But they knew I was gonna be here. Yeah. It wasn't it was it wasn't it wasn't like, oh I hope. Mm -hmm. No, no, it wasn't hope. It was faith a hundred percent. And it's got to be. Cause I'm here. Yeah, yeah. What do you think um attributed to your longevity? What kept you keep getting those phone calls? Uh, the one above, boy. You know, and just, just um, stay in the course. Not you know, enough. just, 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 not by myself did I do this at all. But a lot of people have contributed, both black, white, all kinds. And just, I just follow the, follow the breadcrumbs. Follow the breadcrumbs. You know, even the littlest of things. You know, turn my turn my path to a certain way. You know, there was always somebody yeah. who came along and said, "You know what? I don't think that I don't think you should do that, uh, but I will I will um, suggest something to you." For somebody hard headed like me, you got to suggest. You can't tell me nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And 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 they worked, and they worked. So sure enough, I'm here. 
Um, it's a uh, it's a Friday. Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Go back Thursday. I'm a day. I'm a day ahead. <laughs> but I'm here. No, and we you know, appreciate and, and it. And that's so the much. reason why. And we gotta get some eagle pride in there. For hey, us. hey, I'm 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 with y'all. This is the first place that I performed, oh. and I just realized it this morning. So not this the first the place first in general, but yeah. I started in D.C. Nobody knew who I was, mm -hmm. and then the guy who was managing me said, "I'm gonna take you down to North Carolina." Yeah. To a college, and you gonna perform. I forgot it was this one. Yeah, I mean, until this, this, is this morning. Hollywood Shuffle had their first preview, uh, premiere here okay. because we had such a large amount of PhD mm -hmm. and smart black folks up in here. Amen. So, you hey. know, we're, we're meant to be on everybody's stop. Should yeah. be the first stop. Just hey, man. putting it out there. I'm but here. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. And as an alum, I can't say how much this means for all of our students here. So thanks again for stopping by. Uh, thank you. My special friend, our first Leap Talk guest uh, is a guy who probably no stranger to you if you watched In Living Color, you watched The Water Man, you watched The Crime Family. He's not only just an actor and a comedian, he's also a vocalist instrumentalist. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome to the stage Mr. Tommy Davidson. Tommy here, and Tommy actually shared something with me that I, I didn't know, but I guess you said you started off in comedy. This was one of your first shows on campus here? This is one of my first shows was here. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize until this morning, I was, I said, Burgundy and Craig, and I said, I've been here before. I, I was a comedian in DC, and nobody knew who I was. And um, my manager said, I'm gonna take you out of state, I'm gonna take you down to North Carolina, and you can perform at the school, and this was the school. Mm. Wow. And I think I was great. So it's kind of like full circle. That was uh, 1985. That was 85. I was one years old when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I was two, you know. Um, no, not really, because I am black, and that, that's a whole other category than my brothers and my sisters and my mother. So. We moved to an integrated neighborhood where I grew up, and this time, when the, when the white boys chased me, these three big black brothers stood in front of me, and, a, and the white boys ran the other way, and I've been black since that day. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you were really here. I was yeah. with this team. Yeah. Yeah. So you were really living in color. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was living in color. Yeah. And speaking of uh, Living Color, you played a lot of different roles within that. Um, I guess what, what you experienced growing up and having to understand like what happened and what race was, you, you did a lot of things. Did any of that help fuel some of those roles that you played? Because you know, you did Michael, you, you've done so many different things on the show. You did, uh, what uh, was uh, Martin Lawrence, you did Barnell. Did you miss me? Did you miss me? <laughs> you can take the children. <laughs> Oh, delicious. <laughs> that was funny. So learning how to like, you know, I guess being a creative, one thing I've always done in my, my craft is taking the life experiences growing up and pouring it into like the artistry. For the students here, how do you channel like emotion and put that into your your gift, your craft? Uh just um how bad you want it. How bad you want it, you know. If you're here for a reason, let that be the reason deep inside that this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do for a living. Because I don't care if you're the top doctor in the whole wide, wide world. You know, you still got to go to the grocery store. You still got bills to pay. You still got that, all that stuff. You know, so just taking advantage, you gotta learn to take advantage of your opportunities. And all the time we aren't gonna be conscious of that because we just busy living, you know? And we gotta learn what an opportunity is. You know, I had a lot of opportunities that I didn't realize I had, you know, because I was going down certain paths that I thought were black. You know, I thought if I could fight real good, then I, well, I had to, had to. Um, then hey, I'm black enough 
You know, uh, I thought that if, I thought the friendship meant we beat your ass. You know, that's what I thought it was, you know. And um, got off in the little crime and all that stuff thinking that that's what it was and it wasn't that at all. So I had to find out who I really was. And my mother taught me that. You know, my mother would have me read. So she knew I could read like around about seven. So she started handing me novels. And she would hand them to me. She said, I want that in three weeks. I know you can read it. So she passed me on. Um, Bury My Heart of Wounded Knee was, was about the Native Americans, uh, uh, Trail of Tears. And then she gave me Lena Horne's book. She gave me um, uh, 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 Leaves of Grass, uh, Wild, Wild Women. Uh, she gave me also um, the uh, autobiography of Malcolm X. But before she gave me the book, she said, hey, I'm gonna tell you, you know, I'm gonna give you this book, but all white people ain't the devil. <laughs> and then I read it, I said, I don't know about all that though. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, but it was, it was, it was the fact that I, I started gaining knowledge and gaining knowledge. And, and the knowledge that you have right now is enough. It's enough. Because we ain't in but one day. And it doesn't matter if you're black, you're white, or you're purple. Everybody wants the same thing. They want their children to have, have opportunities more than they had. They want fresh water and good food, a place to have shelter, you know, and the people respect it. And that's where it comes down to it. You know, you want to go outside of that, then you see that as good. Then you move out from there. I learned that that was called gratitude. Um, so that's the life. So, I had to go back to the original me, which is not me at all. Me is, 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 is an empty cup that was filled up by a lot of people who loved me and a lot of people who had a lot of good information to me. Because if I didn't recognize that, I'd be in a snack smiling, uh, I'd be in a snack smiling Academy Awards for no reason. <laughs> well, and on that note, Tommy Davidson. So, today was an amazing first LEAP event. Yeah, yeah. How do you think it went, and what are you hoping for this to, for the kids to get from this? Man, I think uh, it, went, it went amazing. You know, it was a lot of great questions that were asked, uh, a lot of great information that we were able to give out, you know, from me and Tommy. And it was great to kind of hear similar perspectives, but like different responses to what everybody was saying, which is kind of the purpose of this, to kind of let the students know this is how you can lead into your career in the entertainment industry. You know, Tommy does acting, he does animation, he does, you know, comedy, he does singing, he does a little bit of everything. So that was, that was really, really cool, you know, just to see, you know, his response to the students and I think you know moving forward this is going to help um, bring you know a larger turnout it's going to help bring more awareness to the university so that's what I'm probably most excited about is about the next one so with when you first came to Central with this idea uh -huh. was it immediately yes how can we help you what can we do how does it work like what was the process of making this happen and make sure it came to North Carolina mm -hmm. and bringing all these big names here because that's not a cheap <laughs> to get to yeah. do in HBCUs there yeah. it's tough to get that money in and mm -hmm. out of it so how did how was that process it was very easy seamlessly easy because you know when we talked to the university about it it was about um me kind of using and leaning on my relationships with you know the the people that I know like Tommy and Sheila you know their price you know to do this anywhere else it would be astronomical, but this literally was like a phone call and calling in favor. It's like, hey, I'm doing this thing. You know, we're gonna take care of you when you get here. And that's pretty much how it's been. It's, it's been a lot of just relationships that I've built over the years. People trust what, you know, what we've been doing here at North Carolina Central and also off, off campus of my other endeavors. So it's been really, really cool. It's been, a, it's been work. I don't wanna say it's been effortless, mm -hmm. but it's been very easy to work with the university to get this going. Oh, that's fabulous. I'm so yeah. grateful that you're bringing this here to North Carolina because yeah. as someone that works in the entertainment here in the mm -hmm. industry, it's hard sometimes for people to remember that North Carolina used to be third in mm -hmm. film business. It yep. used to be like this was the place yeah. to be even yeah. like so many different shows, mm -hmm. so many different movies have come through here. Right. And I'm glad you're bringing it back because HB2 kind of killed our mm -hmm. entertainment industry and yeah. is coming back. Yep. Like everybody yep. seems to be, yeah. let's keep making films here, movies mm -hmm. here. 
and of course your comics and animation, yes. everything here. Yeah. Uh, so is there anything you can share that's up and coming that maybe we don't know about yet? Yeah, so we have um, in this very building, which is the, the Student Center, I have my jazz festival that'll be this summer, uh, the 27th through the 29th of July. Uh, it's the Marcus Anderson Jazz and Coffee Escape, or we like to call it Majace for short. And uh, we got a lot of great artists that's coming. We got Glenn Jones, an R&B singer. A lot of, every artist is number one billboard topping. Uh, Julian Vaughn, Adam Hawley, Althea Renee, just to name a few. And we're gonna be doing this annually. This is my fifth annual, and we're trying to have it here, you know, in perpetuity, hopefully. Hey, I like that. Uh, yeah, and, and that'll, that'll be able to help bring some more awareness to like university and what's happening at HBCUs too. Fantastic. Well, thanks again for stopping by yeah. and bringing all these wonderful, talented people yeah. to our school. Yeah. Can't wait to see who you bring next. Sheila E. Oh my gosh. She's next. March twenty third. Um, I will. I will be here. All right. Absolutely. Can't miss it. <laughs> yeah. Grew up listening to her. She's the reason mm -hmm. I wanted to play drums. I played Congo. Oh, Wasn't uh, able to get because I moved around too much to be able to get the lessons. But mm -hmm. one day it yeah. might happen because I realized mm -hmm. it's never too late. Right. Well, thanks again for being on the E Spot with Camille. I really appreciate no, thank it. You.